and welcome today we're having another watch me work live stream where we can hang out and talk about art and animation um this time we actually we have a topic because today i want to find the best software to draw cute kittens in because i have this this project here that I had in the back of my head for a while now. It's a collectible card game with cute kittens. In fact, uh, in another live stream, we already uh, drew a couple kittens. And um, yeah, I want to continue that, but this time also with the uh, with the goal to find the best workflow. Because, you know, if this is going to turn into a, a collectible card game, then I potentially have to draw a lot of these. And, uh, yeah, I want to do it as smartly as possible, find a software that allows me to, um, you know, do a lot of these, but also always have an overview and have everything in the highest possible resolution. So, um, yeah, that's a thing that we'll, we'll be doing today. Let me see if the live stream is running as it should. I think everything looks in order. Uh, let me know if you can hear and see me okay, if the audio levels are fine and stuff like that, so we can fine tune that during the live stream. Uh, one more thing that I want to say, uh, this is not a tutorial. This is just a working together, hanging out live stream. If you're looking for a tutorial, I actually just released a wonderful beginner exercise. If you're just starting out with 2D animation, you might want to check that one out because I think it's the best exercise that beginners could do. Um, in fact, let me also put the uh, link in the chat here. Uh, because I'm I'm qu uh, quite proud of that beginner exercise. So, you know, even if you're not a total beginner, but you feel like you have trouble with uh, making your animations really smooth and elegant, then you should have a look, look at that exercise. I just put the link in the description. Uh, hello, Mr. Creative. Uh, hello, guten good. <laughs> you can see and hear me in New Zealand. Wonderful. I'm not even talking that loud that my voice travels all the way to New Zealand. Uh, that's a stupid joke. Didn't work. <laughs> hey, uh, hi, Sanya. Uh, nice to see you guys. Um, hello, Infinite Imagination. Amazing that there are so many people here because we're, you know, usually I stream always a little later in the day. Um, and I wanted to try this time slot for now. Um, you know, for our, our cute kittens here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Creative. Um, Mr. Creative likes the the last video. I have to say, I'm pretty proud of it too. Like, I think it's one of the best beginner tutorials that I've ever made. And somehow it's still a bit long, <laughs> like a 30 minute tutorial. But if you've done that exercise, you really uh, well on your way to to experimenting and understanding the most important or one of the most important elements of animation, which is spacing. Um. Alrighty, um, so let's jump right into drawing some cute kittens here. Uh, I'm in concepts right now, and I wanted to try the software a, a little bit more. Here are some some drawings that we already did. You know what? Let's let's color this watermelon kitty because you can barely tell that it is a watermelon. Um, so let me see. It does have layers, so I can put a layer below. Yeah, I, I want to use this chance to also experiment with some software that I don't use that much. I have used Concept a couple of times because what I, what I really like about Concepts is the infinite canvas. The basic version of the software is free, by the way. And I just, for character design, I love uh, software with an infinite canvas because, you know, it, it doesn't limit you. You don't reach the end of the page and are like, oh, well, the page ends here. I have to stop uh, brainstorming. And uh, yeah, so I really like infinite canvas for like, uh, for like designs. And I kind of do like the, it is a vector software as far as I know, but 
yeah, it is a vector software. I can just zoom in infinitely, or, you know, at least insanely close. Um, but it, it does have some soft brushes. It's an airbrush. And here's a fill tool. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna get the look that I want here because I want them to look a little watercolory. But you know, we might as well. We might as well try it. Ah, some people from India here again. 2:50 p.m. Ah, that's a good time. Here in Germany, it's uh, it's 11:20 in the morning, not in the night. <laughs> So, let's see how that looks. Oh, it, it blends a little bit with the paper texture. That's something that I really like. Um, I don't want to fill it. I like the look of having the color leak over a little bit. Um, let's try a little bit of a oop, darker color to give it more texture in the middle. And you know, then it kind of gets see-through see through up there maybe that's a bit too dark um, and some pink at the outside I kind of like this the sloppy coloring look sometimes but I'm afraid the brush doesn't look enough like watercolor which I would really like for this project um, because I feel like they're already you know I'm not the first person to draw cute kittens on the internet but there is this this common vector style where you know the kittens are all just filled, um, and I wanna I wanna go a little bit away from that style. I, I wanna have it a more painterly look, which is also a challenge for me because I usually I usually don't paint a lot, but I would love to get more into it. Um, and, and figure out how these kinds of things work. Now, then it's always the question, what do I do with the cat face? Do I actually, do I actually make it brighter here? Do I blend it somehow to a cat face? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I mean, a little contrast is good here. Maybe it should just, that looks a bit muddy. Maybe it should just be pink. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's nice. I don't know, still looks a bit muddy. But yeah, I, I think this is not going to be the software to do the painting. I think it's definitely going to stay at the beginning of the uh, production workflow when I when we do the brainstorming. Um, you know what? Let's let's do a bunch of more kitties. Um, let me think what what kittens could we do? We already had Mermaid Kitty, Flower Kitty, Egg Kitty. Um, you know what? Let's do Ice Cream Kitties. I somehow crave some ice cream. It has been a little uh, rainy in Germany. Actually, pretty uh, pretty stormy. Like there was a lot of like a record amount of rain over here. So I'm craving for some sun and sunshine. Um, so let's do, let's do a kitty ice cream. Let's see how that could look. I'm pretty sure I've seen something like this before, but that's not gonna stop me. <laughs> People don't have the monopoly on cute kittens. All right. 
I'm also not sure with the eyes. Like, I feel like those button eyes have been have been done to death for these cute kittens. And my my natural drawing style, I kind of have this. Let's try to to do this in a similar way. In my in my own drawing style, I often do eyes like this. Um, have them like kind of open, which I think could go well with the with the painterly look. So I don't know. It takes a bit away from this like super stylized uber cuteness, but I don't know. I I kind of I kind of feel like it it. Gives it a little bit more detail, which somehow makes it more real. I that is not the right word. Word. I don't think that makes sense. But I don't know. It it has a different feel to it that I like. You know, it's not as stylized. It feels more like a a character. Hello, Ray. Hmm. Now, of course, in this world, everything can be a kitten, which means that the waffle itself could also be a kitten. So, how would that look? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. This gets a bit confusing. <laughs> uh, maybe we should leave the waffle alone. We are gonna create very cute kittens and some monstrosities along the way. So yeah, I, I have this idea of like a trading card game. It's almost like like magic or Pokemon and you have those those different cute kitties fighting each other. And of course, you know, they're all different types. Like the ice cream kitty would be uh would be of course a fighter type ice. You know what we could try? We could have multiple scoops in the waffle Let's see how that looks yeah but it's always worth redrawing things as you see they're not quite their best yet Ah, I think that's fun with multiple of them. That is cute. What is everyone doing on this beautiful weekend? Do you guys have to work? Or do you have the day off? I kinda don't have to do official work today, which I'm pretty glad for, because lately I had some Saturdays where I had to work. Um, so I'm glad to do a personal project today. Which, you know, on the other side, I'm still doing work <laughs> a little bit. But, you know, if it's fun work, it doesn't, doesn't feel that bad.
<laughs> I like that grumpy one. Yeah, I think I like it that way. <laughs> yeah, I think this is more or less the final uh, like arrangement. Or maybe let's try one more. Let's try to stack them. Oh, someone in the chat says, I'm working in Open Tunes making a music video. Cool thing. Is it uh, uh, a music from your own band or a music that you like that you wanted to animate to? Ah, somebody is calling me. Why are you calling? Why? I am doing a live stream. No, no, no. Um, okay. Yeah, wh what did I want to do? I wanted to stack them like that. Let's try it. Let's try to plan it first. That make the rough shapes very... Very see-through. Mr. Creative asks, did you so see any Cartoon Saloon movies? Yes! Yes, I did. Um, what did I see? I saw Song of the Sea and uh, Secret of Kells. I haven't seen the newest yet. I haven't seen Wolf Walkers, I think is the name. Um, but yeah, oh, I, I really want to. I, I like how uh, how much they stick with their stylized approach. Um, it is so much fun. And you know, and the stories are also something different than the Disney, the usual Disney stuff. Um, what is your opinion on them? Mission to do the video. 50 seconds done so far. That's cool. And a music video sounds pretty fun. It's good when commission work is fun. <laughs> and 50 seconds. That's already that's already an achievement. How long will it be in total? That's the thing with music videos, and you know, they're still gonna be like Two to three minutes long. Thank you for following, Joe Wimsey. Ah, okay, maybe there's so much detail already with the melting ice cream. Um, Okay, so the top one needs to be super happy, right? Hmm. I like when they show their little teeth, their little vampire teeth. Two minutes and 25 seconds of music video. Three months of work so far. Oh wow. 
Yeah, animation takes a lot of work, a lot of time. Well, good luck with getting it done. <laughs> I like the idea with the ice cream dripping into one of their faces. That. And now we can look up. Maybe the ears should be different of the top one. So more like this. And the bottom one is not bothered by anything. Alright, I like this one. So yeah, this software is good for scribbles, doing the scribbles and concepts. But for coloring, we need to look we need to look at a different software. Oh, Mr. Creative, yeah, Breadwinner is another movie from Cartoon Saloon. I heard that it is super sad. I haven't I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, oh that's very far up on my watch list. I, I should definitely finally watch it. Is it on Netflix? I think I saw recently a couple, a couple animation movies where I was like, oh, I need to watch that. Yeah, it seems to be on Netflix. Ooh, it is on Netflix. I should definitely watch it. <laughs> Maybe tonight. That would be nice. Okay. Let's try more, one more variation. Let's put him. I move this? Yeah. I still, does anyone know concepts and how to rotate things on a desktop PC? All I find in the online help for concept is like, use two finger gestures, but I, I only have a drawing uh, monitor here. I only have my Cintiq here. I can't use two fingers to rotate the stuff. Rotating off, rotating on, still doesn't help. Hmm. Oh no! What did I do? Why did it just jump back? Oh! Oh no! Duplicate? Copy him? Copy? I already did that. Ah! Now it stayed here. Weird. Why did it vanish a second ago. The thing that I wanted to try is, um, oops, I wanted to give that one a cream top. You know, cherry on top kind of thing. This is getting too much, I think. Ah, no. I mean, 
no. No, 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 no. That's too much. That is too much. I think we should stick with that one. Ah, Black Pepper Studios, thank you so much. Your animation tutorial is a great help. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. That's so awesome to hear. <laughs> nice. By the way, if anyone uh, of you, if you do any one of the uh, 51 animation exercises or follow any one of our, uh, our tutorials and you put it somewhere in social media, please make sure to tag us with at Animator Island so I can, I can find it and see your wonderful work. And uh, I try to leave comments when I find something, like if you want my feedback or something like that. Um, yeah, speaking of wanting feedback, we have a Patreon. And on the Patreon, we have a group mentoring tier. If you want feedback from me or another professional mentor, you can join the group mentoring tier on Patreon. Bring whatever you're currently working on. It can be an animation, an illustration, character design, a story idea, and you get feedback from a professional mentor, from me, and we also discuss it in the group. And this way you can improve your work and your animation skills. Um, so yeah, that's the group mentoring on uh, Patreon. So if you're interested in supporting us, please check out our Patreon and um, yeah. I'd be very happy to get to know some of you people um, a little bit closer and your work over there. It has been a lot of fun with the with the few mentor uh, students I already have in the group. Um, yeah, and most importantly, it can help you to get your projects done. Like if you're struggling with keeping deadlines, that would add a deadline for you because there's the monthly group mentoring call. Uh, yeah, so that's the offer that we have on Patreon. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break, but I'll be back in, I don't think even five minutes, just a couple minutes. Gotta get more water. Uh, and then we can continue drawing some more cute ice cream kittens. Yeah, see you in a second.
All right, I'm back. So I did say it <laughs> was supposed to take only take a minute, but ah, uh, my father uh, called me and he wants to pick up some stuff from here. And of course, this happens while I'm live streaming. <laughs> but oh well. Oh, there are a couple questions in the chat. Let me see. Uh, Joe Whimsy says, I taught myself animation using your site and YouTube as my accessible resource. Awesome, that's great to hear. Um, yeah, that's that's why I'm doing this over here. So, um, And that's my goal with the 2D animation class. I want it to be like a complete resource to learn 2D animation. We're still very much at the beginner exercises, but I hope to grow it over time. To cover every aspect of animation. Whew, I'm a little bit out of breath here. <laughs> um, that's how much I wanted to get back to you to, to stream here. Um, Mr. Creative says, I searched 51 animation exercises and chose two videos of what I want to practice. Um, you should Google search it. The 51 animation exercise is a list on the website. And I, at one point I had the plan to make a, like a um, video for every single exercise, but I, I shelved this for now uh, because of the 2D animation class, the general one. But yeah, eventually I do wanna have a video about every single one of these exercises, but you know, for now it's mostly a list. You can see though, if you look for 51 animation exercises on Instagram, you can see all the wonderful animation uh, stuff that other people did. And also on YouTube. Uh, I, I recently watched uh, uh, um, where, where someone did all of the 51 animation exercises just with a flower sack. Uh, she was pretty amazing. Um, yeah, people have done people have done amazing things to to do these exercises. It's really awesome to see. Joe Wimsey, after going through your content, it helped me get to the level I needed to complete a diploma in two D animation. That's fantastic. Recently graduated this year. That's awesome to hear. Nice. Yeah, congratulations, <laughs> and I am happy that I could help. <laughs> and good luck with your animation career. Like the first years are really, really exciting. The first jobs and stuff. Best of luck to you. <laughs> All right, we have some more kittens to draw. Well, actually, we have these kittens to um, to to color is what we should do and we need to look for a different software i uh, already have a couple of things open uh, i have clip studio paint i rarely used it i did like one or two illustration in clip studio paint i always hear from people who love it and um yeah so i want to get a bit more into clip studio paint i have photoshop of course as well um what else do we have? We have open tunes. We could do it in harmony. Here's the thing. I kind of want to do the uh, the kitty illustrations in an animation software or a tool that can also do animation because um, I think we're going to need these, um, these kittens in a lot of different resolutions and in a lot of different crops. And the cool thing about an animation software is that you could, along the timeline, reposition elements, you know, to turn them into different formats. And, you know, maybe some will have like a trading card layout. Maybe some will be on a t-shirt, but you know, or some will be social media posts, but they all need to be arranged differently. And this is very good to do in, in, in an animation software. Like you, you choose the canvas to be as big as possible so that it covers all the different sizes that you want to export. And then going through the timeline, you have the different arrangements. I think that could be the smartest way to, um, to do this. Joe Wimsey asks, do you use TV paint much? 
Uh, I don't. I had a couple projects where I used open to uh, where I used TV Paint, um, and I have to say I'm not the biggest fan of bitmap brushes, uh, which is ironic because we're gonna use bitmap brushes to color <laughs> the kittens right now. Uh, but for my outlines, I so much prefer vector. I'm, uh, I don't know. I love going back into the line work and change it with the with the edge points of the vector stroke. I know in in TV Paint you can nudge your lines a little bit, but you cannot drastically blow them up or shrink them, or uh, you know the advantages that you have with with vector uh, stuff. So I'm. I don't know. I'm just so used to that, to that flexibility that whenever I don't have it or I have to get used to, oh, I need to, ah, there, there are limits to what I can do with the line after I drew it, that I, I really don't do bitmap a lot. Um, they do have awesome brushes though. Like if you want to have like a charcoal look or like the best pencil emulation or I think even the watercolor brushes are probably really good. Uh, I was always very impressed when I saw very painterly things and always found out it was made in TV paint. That's like its speciality. Um, but yeah, I, I still want my flexibility. I still want my vectors. <laughs> Joe Wimsey says, me too, vectors spoiled me. Yeah, it, it is a little bit like that, right? The possibilities that you have, you don't want to go back. You don't want to miss that again. Mr. Creative says, but I love that smoothness and brushes. Yeah, and TV paint. Joe Whimsy, what about Affinity Designer for vector illustrations? I haven't tried the Affinity products yet. Uh, I bought them a while ago. They had like a sale when, uh, you know, the situation started. The situation that the world is right in right now. <laughs> Uh, they had like a sale and like even an extended trial and I downloaded it, but I never used it um, But yeah, I heard good things about it like it's supposed to be a illustrator clone I Have illustrator 2 and I have to use it for my my one of my jobs sometimes But Adobe illustrator, I don't know like I don't get into like a ease of creating something there like it's good for like topography and stuff, but I, I never find myself using Illustrator to draw something. Uh, at least something that's not really graphic, like uh, has a graphic look. Ah, to Whimsy can only recommend it. Affinity Designer, Photoshop and Illustrator Killer. Yeah, I, I will have a look at it. I heard about a lot of studios, like even the, the game studio that I was working for to do Minute of Island. Um, they switched to Clip Studio Paint to edit their Photoshop tutorials. And I kind of like that, that Photoshop is getting a little bit of competition, uh, which will probably also keep them innovating and keep them fresh rather than, you know, just enjoying the monopoly. It's good that there are alternatives to Photoshop. Hmm. Every uh, Mr. Creative says uh, everything in Illustrator you make that in Photoshop too, but it's vector, not so. Mm hmm. Huh. Yeah, so maybe we still need to discover that. Um, for now, I'm gonna work with the tools that I have. I'm always a friend of like trying every tool. Um, because, you know, there's... The best tool doesn't exist. It's just... Um, you know, some tools are a little bit better for for certain jobs and then I like to just switch to that to that tool so many kitties uh... workflow test 
Oh, we really need to discover, we need to go through that folder. I've done some of these, some things for this project in the past. Um, so, Ice Cream Kitties Scribble. And then let's bring that over into Clip Studio Paint. Um, new. Let's make a new illustration. Oh, that's already a huge canvas. I'm not exactly sure how big of a canvas we need. Let's go with a 3000 or let's say 3500 by 3500. Or do we need even more? Like if we're printing posters. I always like to, to think big <laughs> into the future. I'm always annoyed if I created a bitmap too small. So let's do 4000 by 4000. And you know, put every possible arrangement within this uh, within this frame. All right. Still gotta save that somewhere. I'm always paranoid about software crashing. Harmony kinda has me nervous about that. Let's save it here before we do anything. and import that drawing. And this will be our scribble layer underneath. Yep. All right, so let's see what kind of brushes we have here. In Clip Studio. No, no worries, Joe Whimsy. It's really difficult to try typo free <laughs> on those small devices. The old gaming PC is constantly restarting. Can't draw right now. Does it reverse the mouse pointer? What? That that sounds odd. <laughs> uh, like I really like any problem re related to the mouse annoys me so much. I have uh, over at my other laptop. I have a laptop for one of the jobs that I'm doing, and I don't know. I bought like a very cheap mouse just to have one for that laptop, and it's so annoying. Like the mouse cursor always gets stuck. It might just be the surface of the table. Maybe I should try a mouse pad or putting something under it. But I, I, like, <laughs> that is torture for me. A mouse that doesn't react as it should. Um, the Marvel What If trailer. Uh. Mr. Creative says, anybody watch the Marvel What If trailer? I stunned that animation, but I don't know how they do animation like that quality. Hmm. The Marvel What If trailer. I haven't seen it yet. Um, maybe we can check it out at the end of the stream. I still, I still want to keep copyright material, copyrighted material out of the stream. But one day we need to we need to do like a reaction live stream, you know, that's only like for for the live stuff. Hi, ABC Motion. And I show you my show reel for this year. Um, yeah, I think right now you can't post links in the chat, unfortunately, because uh, I had a problem with spammers, so. That, that's that's kind of difficult and I kind of don't do I don't show stuff on streams that I didn't watch before um, 
We have the mentoring session on Patreon. Like there's a monthly group mentoring that you can join over there. And occasionally we also do free critiquing live streams. So follow us on the social medias and uh, you will know when we hit, when we do another critiquing live stream. Um, yeah. So here's the link to the group mentoring. If that's interesting to you, you can bring your demo reel or any animation that you're working on there and uh, I can have a look at, at it and give you feedback. Um, but yeah, there also might be free events that come up occasionally. Um, Joe Whimsy, left is right and right is left now with your computer. That's <laughs> that sounds really annoying. <laughs> oh my. Okay, back to Clip Studio. Let's try a new vector layer, because I still want my vectors for my lines. Let's see what we have. We have the real G pen. I think we need to make it a little bigger to really see what this thing is doing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Very standard, thicker and thinner line. You know, let's let's write next to it what it is. Real G pen. Then, oh, we have the G pen. The not real one. Ah, so this one doesn't get thicker and thinner. Alrighty, mapping pen. Looks very much like the other one. Maybe we should make it a bit thicker. Maybe the G pen as well, give it a chance. While being a bit thicker. Oh, the other one was on 16. <laughs> I mean, that explains a lot. Isn't there a way to like make the brush stick? Just a setting with dynamics? No. Hmm. Ah, this one is a little bit more tilted. Hmm. Hello, Seven. Oh, Joe Whimsy got the mouse fix. That's great. <laughs> Enjoy the freedom of ease. Hello, Sammy. So, this is mapping pen. Turnip pen. Hmm. They are all fairly similar. Calligraphy is probably a little more tilted. Yeah, that's a huge difference. I do like that sometimes. Oh, yeah, you, you see that in the writing. Doesn't fit this project though. For effect line. Hmm, that's probably a special line that I don't understand. Oh, it gets thicker and thinner. Like, it starts very thin and ends very thin. And what do we have? Textured pen. Now, textured pen, that sounds interesting, because, you know, I do want... I do want a little bit of a texture in the lines. Aw, oh, Seven, thank you. Yeah, I really like that video too. <laughs> it was so much work to get this tutorial done. 
And you know what? One little bit of behind the scenes information about my tutorials. They look like I filmed them in one day, but I think the last tutorial, the beginner's exercise, I filmed it over three days. And I was always, I always made sure to wear the same shirt. You can even see me in the later takes. I got a haircut. I got my hair a lot shorter. <laughs> Because somehow I'm always like, okay, let's record a tutorial real quick. And then for some reason it, it takes hours and hours because I do redos or, you know, with this one I actually, I did a whole first first pass and, and animated myself into a corner and started over again. I'm so glad that that video is out now. And I'm so overwhelmed by the positive reaction. That's really, it's really good to hear that, you know, this, this work helps people and is, is worth it um mr creative is animating in toon boom and watching this live nice good luck with your animation oh seven today i make a tutorial on how to animate fire with those line planning nice yeah, fire and effect animation I absolutely love, too. We really need to have a closer look on the channel about that, too, at some point. Um, okay, I think this is going to be the line. Um, it's going to be the line that we use. Now the question is, how big is it going to be? Um... Hmm. And should it really go to zero if I remove the pressure? I don't think it should. Um, minimum value, we should keep a little bit. Oh, do I have to press OK? No, minimum value. Didn't look like it worked. Oh, it's a percentage value. Okay. That makes more sense. Or, or is it? Yeah, it's a percentage. So maybe like this. Hmm. A little bit more. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Make corner pointed? What is that? Ah. Is that maybe the vector corner? Okay. Now let's do this again with make corner pointed. Oh yeah, it does make the corner pointers. But I do think I want to have the softer one. We have a little bit of line stabilization, that's good. All right. Uh, seven asks, by the way, what are you making and which software? Um, we're doing this test right now in Clip Studio Paint uh, and um, I have this concept for like a trading card game cartoon universe where everything is a kitty. Uh, I mean, it's not the super most original thing. There are already a lot of very cute kitten illustrations out there in the internet. But I had this idea to put a lot of different kitties like ice cream kitty, mermaid kitty, robot kitty into like a trading card game concept and maybe also make some cartoons with it. Um, there's another thing that I wanted to show you guys. I, I, a while back I did a calendar for my family for Christmas. Um, let me show you. And it had uh, it had scientific 
facts. <laughs> you know, that was a, a, a gift especially for my cousins. Um, and uh, it's all in German right now here, but, um, you know, it, it's explaining the uh, food chain. And as you can see, everything is a kitty. It was back in 2019. I'm not that content with how the shapes are. Here we have a... a eclipse? What is it called? Yeah, so <laughs> explaining scientific concepts with kittens. And I might want to revive that too. Um, so yeah, oh, that, that's one of my favorite. This is Vo Volcano Kitty with Magma Kitty. <laughs> um, so yeah, instead of having this on the shelf forever, I now wanted to do something with this. A calendar. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, seven. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Creative, we don't have an effect animation tutorial yet. We're probably go we're probably gonna do it in a live stream. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we do it today. I wanna get the ice cream drawing done. Uh, but maybe we can have a quick look at effects, maybe? And to be quite honest, I also have to research a bunch again. Like, there are always like some... Like, for effect animation, people really find... Um, people really find ways how to make it even easier and better and... Um, I, I always like to discover new techniques. Okay. Um, I think I like this brush. Can we just save it? Create a copy. Import subtool. Oh. Outline. Ah, yeah, there we have it saved. And I guess we can probably reset these. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. So we now have our our brush uh, saved here. Alrighty. Let's make a new layer, give it a name. You know what, let's keep the... Let's keep the elements separate um, because we might want to give things different colors later on. Um, where is my scribble layer? This is the scribble layer. Uh, ah, transparency here. So we really see what we're doing. Hmm. For some reason, I don't see the Twitch comments in one of my tools. Ah, it's your whimsy. It was the display tablet that messed up the mouse. Hmm, that can happen. Okay, now for some cleanup work. Oh, no, not on this layer. We want to do the waffle on this one. Is there a tool to delete protruding lines? I think there is. Try it like that. And let's see. I think in the erasers we have vector, vector. Yeah, this is the tool that I want. I love this. I another reason to love vector, isn't it? 
All you can, all you have to do is just cross out, cross out the line, and it disappears. I love that. Don't like the shape of that one line here, though. Let's see how the select tool works in Clip Studio. What do we have here? We have a move tool, move layer, move grid. Can I move single, single strokes? Is this not possible? Ah, with holding control. Ah. Okay. Let's get rid of a couple. Oh, no. I can't delete single points. Hmm. Mm, I don't like that this has a dent now. Hmm. Is there a vector point editing tool no this is for the layer mm. ah seven says that tool that looks like a shape builder Ah, Mr. Creative, you found the 51 animation exercises. Yeah, good. Uh, the 51 animation exercise, once you are through that list, you will see that, you know, those challenges, they keep improving your skills, they force you to think outside the box, they force you to uh, really research some of the things to make the animation look good. I can only recommend doing them. Really good. Sammy says, I just finished level one of your 51 animation exercises. Where should I post and could I get your feedback? Uh, if you tag us on Instagram, for example, that's one where I regularly look and I try to give comments um, there. Uh, so that's one way to, to get our attention and get, get maybe some feedback if you want. Uh, yeah, just post it on social media and tag us, mention us, hashtag us. And, uh, you know, sometimes I go through, not as regularly as I would like to, but I, uh, I go through it and try to give comments if people want them. Um, another way to get feedback from me is to join our Patreon. Um, on Patreon, we have a group mentoring tier if you join in the group mentoring tier you can join a monthly group call with me or another professional mentor and you can show whatever you're currently working on you can get feedback on an animation an illustration character design a story idea an animatic anything art and animation related and we help you to make it better and to improve your art skills um so that's one thing that we offer over on patreon and uh, we already had two of these meetings and it was it was wonderful. Uh, two wonderful people already showed their, their very cool projects, very ambitious. Um, and I really hope to grow that group in the future and have something like a workshop, uh, which is a little bit of an accountability thing where we motivate each other, where we set each other deadlines, where we push each other's skills. Um, so yeah. That is the group mentoring on our Patreon. You find more. You can find out more about this on animatorisland.com slash group mentoring. Uh, but yeah, I also try to give free feedback on social media uh, if I if I see something. Hey, animators inspire. Yeah, no problem. I don't think you're late. I think I'm extremely early today with the live stream. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy with me always mixing up the live stream times. I know, kind of annoying. But you know, life always gets in the way. I try to stream more regularly so people can actually 
you know, people actually know when I will live stream. Okay, I'm still on the look for the vector editor tool in Clip Studio Paint. We have zoom, we have move, we have operation. What is operation? Hmm, object. Oh, operation. Why is it called operation? Okay, can I delete points now? Now I can only delete entire la entire lines. I don't want that. Oh come on. Hmm. Operation. Select layer. Uh, I mean, yeah, that should select that layer. Selectable object. Hmm. Vector. Move control points, scale and rotate. Yeah, we want all of that. What is free transform? Uh, okay, free transform is just picking the entire layer. Move control points. But how do I delete control points? Ah! Right click and delete control point. All right. Can I do multiple at once? This one, this one, this one. Right click, delete control point. Ah. Okay. Switch corner. Ah. Okay. Too bad that we don't have the vector handles here. Hello Sprout, are you ignoring me, sir? Uh, did you ask a question? <laughs> but yeah, thanks for the love from India. I'm not ignoring people, I'm just working on this, you know? <laughs> but I will look in, I will look into the chat occasionally. Oh, no. I deleted the whole entire line again. I don't want it to do that. Okay, good. We got our... Did I work on the correct layer? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, all right, let's put in the hatching. And for that, we're gonna go back. I actually like the kind of flat that impression here. Now I do wish the line could go a little bit thinner. Uh, let's check that. Maybe let's put it on 40. Save as default. Yes. And let's try that again. With operation. Oh. Let's lock that layer maybe. I keep accidentally moving it. Ah. There's an interesting question in the chat here. Boop, boop, boop. Where is it? What is an animatic in animation? Uh, yeah, Shiv, uh, an animatic is a preview of your animation, of your film, where you put the storyboard images in in order on a timeline to have a very rough preview of how your film is gonna play out. And the cool thing about an animatic is you can add music, sound, you can add the voice acting already to get a feel for how, oh, is this crashing? No, oh, what is going on? Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a timed storyboard where you can see your rough storyboard drawings already in action and um, 
this way judge how your animation is gonna play out and already do the timing and try to already make the scene as best as it could possibly be. Uh, you can find a few nice animatics if you just uh, look for them on YouTube. You can uh, see animatics for real productions like if you look for Pixar uh, animatic Like for me, I don't even storyboard anymore. I immediately try to do it in uh, in an animation software and time it out. Oh, seven for me, animatic comes comes very early. I I want to make sure to get the um, to get the animatic done as early as possible. Okay, so let's do Ice Kitty one. And you know, the thing with the animatic is, if you do it, you will realize that a scene is not working as you thought it would work. Um, you know, oftentimes you, you, you still have to improve your scene and oftentimes you, um, you notice problems with the staging, with the cinematography, with the pacing of your animation, and then you do the animatic over again. And because it's only scribbles, because it's storyboard uh, quality from the drawing style, uh, you can change it very easily and very easily try different things. So I like to do it fairly, fairly early. I want to avoid tangents. That corner, for some reason, I. It's very difficult to be content with that one. But yeah, ideally the animatic should have like a final like this is the this is the thing that you're gonna animate and then you stick to it like a blueprint. So I get I guess in that sense is the it, it, that makes it the final the final thing. Yeah, good idea to use as much of the dialogue, SFX, and uh, sound effects and music in the animatic as you can. It helps a lot. Yeah. It really does. It's kind of my favorite phase of animation because you can quickly try different versions of your movie um, and find the best one. And you know, that's what it is all about, kinda. That's the most important thing, a film has to work. And the animatic makes sure that it does before you put uh, in a lot of animation work. Maybe you could also have a chubby kitty. Still should smile a lot. Oh, I love that one. I love that facial expression.
Maybe we should also think about colorful lines. How about the tongue sticking out? The first time our cat stuck the tongue out is so, so cute and weird. She just yawned, did a big yawn. And you know, when, when cats yawn, they show the tongue, they go like and stre uh, stretch out their tongue. And then she closed her mouth, but the tongue was still out. And th this waited like a, um, like as if she bit on her tongue. That was really cute. I still don't like how lines end. Sometimes they get like really pointy all of a sudden. I think we still have to tweak our, um, our brush a little bit. But it's good that we can tweak it so much. Do Ice Kitty 2 next. But before we do that, I need a quick break. I'll get more to drink and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. And um, yeah, see you in a couple of seconds. Where is my. Ah, there it goes. Be right back.
Okay. Ha! This time I even faded the music. <laughs> I'm such a professional streamer now. <laughs> okay. Now let's get back into that line work. Try to get the rest of it done. Maybe there's something wrong with that curve. Mm -hmm -hmm. That pressure curve. I'm really not an expert with that. Ice Kitty 2, I already created that layer. It's amazing how just a line, just one line can make a huge difference. Like, you know, if we have this peak and here, and then we have this going down, this feels completely different than the other way around. If this goes further down and this doesn't go as far down, you get a very different expression, especially because this kind of like works as an eyebrow for the kitty below. Kind of interesting how, how much of a difference just one stroke can make. That's why I like to put a lot of work into, like, uh, just my main poses. And I mean, I, this kind of is a main pose, right? Um, let's try to change that shape a bit. Yeah, I think that is better. Ah, I like that sharp corner here. Okay. are really important to me that that shape looks really good yeah I think that works ah I like it that way it's so amazing that if you if you bend the like this feels so much different than actually rotating the pupil in like that that can make such a huge difference. And direct the gaze even more. To tilt the eye in that way. get so quiet while I when I do inking I don't know why somehow it, it seems to take more brain capacity than just scribbling which I, I wouldn't have thought because you know we already did a lot of the planning in the um, in the rough I don't know always interesting Talking and streaming. <laughs> I also hope that the line is not too thick. 
because I always tend to use very thick lines. I want to move away from that a little bit. But I don't, I don't think it's too thick. I think it's quite coherent. Now what I'm looking forward to do is to try the uh, the watercolor brush tools in Clip Studio. I think I really like how the line gets thicker and thinner now. Maybe let's move the nose and the... Mouth down a bit, yeah. I like that there's a little bit of three-dimensionality that can be fil felt in like the, the head turn. Maybe it gets a bit stronger if we move the ears down. a difficult line right here. <laughs> this scoop melted all over. And now back to the power of Vector. We're gonna tweak the line. Oh, those are a lot of edge points. I must say, I'm not the most impressed with the vector tools here. Why does it have so many points? Delete point with V. Control V? No. It doesn't delete it. Sometimes the spinning mouse cursor where I think like, oh, is this gonna crash on me? Oh, no But so far So far so good. Let's try to delete some points Ah, ah that I should not have done ah, You know what let's just delete the line Maybe there's like a nudge tool that would be better. Oh! Uh, what happens if I just delete the control points? Okay, it just suddenly ends there. Alright. Oh, 
Ah, oh, somebody on Facebook wrote, thank you. Well, thanks to you too. <laughs> Yeah, this looks really good going into the into the poor things eyes. I still have to figure out the shape on the side. I wonder how easily I can change the the color of the lines. Here. No, I can rotate. Doesn't look like shearing is possible. What does it have? Move scale skew. Ah, yeah, this is what I wanted. Moving it down, moving it here. Almost matching up. I must say, everything seems to be there in Clip Studio Paint. I'm just sometimes surprised by where they hit certain functions. But I do like how the brush feels. Um, you know, that's also an important point. Like sometimes it feels like things are lagging and I really, I really hate that in the software. Select layer, no, select lines. Can I select them with control? No. How can I just move all of you arrow keys? Okay. Yeah, it's taken shape. Okay, there we have our ice cream kittens. Hmm. Okay, now let's get into the watercolor tool. Oh no, we drew one of the kitties not in a bit in a vector layer. Ah. Maybe we can leave it like that. I want to try the watercolor brushes. So this definitely has to be a bitmap layer probably to be really working. Let's try some nice colors over here. Strawberry, raspberry color here. 
Rush size. Okay, ah, that's like a soft. Mm hmm. Soft brush like this. What happens if I put another color in? Ah, they don't really interact that much. Ah, they do a little bit. Oh, they blend. They blend nicely. Oh, that's not too bad. That's pretty nice blending. I like that. But there's no real... Like, I don't like the edge that much. Oh, this one has an interesting edge. Okay. Yeah, this one has a little bit more texture in the edge. I like that more. Running edge watercolor. Let's see what that does. Oh yeah, this is behaving like I think it should. Yeah, I like that uneven cloudy edge. That's gonna be quite nice. So running color edge watercolor. What is watery? I kind of like that feel. It feels a bit digital. But that doesn't isn't necessarily bad. Bad. Emphasize texture. Hmm. Too soft. Uneven layering. There's like jumps on the layers. Soothing watercolor. Oh, this is a blending brush. Ooh. Ah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, I think we experimented enough with that. Um, before we get into coloring these, I just wanted to jump into another software real quick called ArtRage. I used ArtRage a while ago. Um, and I want to try, try again how the functions are right now. ArtRage. Didn't I install it? I just installed it. Here. This is Art Rage. Oh, just a second. My father wanted to pick up something from the house. I'll be right back.
So, where were we? We're experimenting with watercolor. Um, and I wanted to jump into Art Rage to have a look at the watercolor there. So, watercolor there is very interesting um, because it has like a lot of processing applied to it. Oh my god, this already looks so good. Oh, this is a bit too dark. I mean, it gets a little... <laughs> it gets watery. Of course it gets watery in the middle. Hmm, somehow it looks a bit dirty. I do like the edge. Look at this edge. Look at that. That's so nice. Hmm. Doesn't Adobe also have a watercolor software now? Like Fresco or what is it? What what is the name? Maybe we should have a look at that. Let's see in the Creative Cloud. I heard about that. Fresco? What's that the name? Oh yeah, desktop. There's a software here. Let's install that and let's try that. It gets a bit dirty, the watercolor brush in Art Rage. Which, I don't know, probably is realistic. What settings do we have? Hmm. Bleeding, set that to less. I don't know. I'm a bit underwhelmed. Yeah, animators inspire Adobe Fresco. I'm looking forward to trying that in a second. Maybe that is the answer to our watercolor problem. Or I could actually use real watercolor. I haven't done that in a while. But I really like doing this, especially doing like multiple passes to create like a, a blending. It has something very calming, very meditative to work with watercolors and like blend color again and again. But who has time for that sort of thing? Hey, Clipper Flipper. Nice to see you. I don't know, those aren't bad, the Clip Studio ones. I, I like... I like the cloudy one probably combined with some hard edges. That, that could already work fine. Ah, Fresco is installed. Shall we try it? Let's see. tried it before on my tablet yeah it's saved in the cloud all right um can i make the window bigger it's kind of not what i want Oh, that brush is also not bad. Hmm. Okay, so, but now for the watercolor. Why is this teaching me multi-style, multi-finger gestures? I can't do multi-finger on my, on my Cintiq. Oh, this was the color swatch from another program. Fresco, how can I... How can I make you full screen? Don't be Fresco. 
Ah, like that. Okay, so here, mm, vector, vector, it has a vector brush. Mm, not bad. Oh, and it puts it on a new layer. Does anyone here in the chat work in Fresco? Is that a tool worth checking out? Does it have a pattern in the vector? Ah, okay, so this is not pressure sensitive, it's just doing it. This is, this is pressure sensitive, all right. Okay, but it doesn't have a texture to it. That's good to know. Are there like options? Smoothing. Oh, yeah, there are some options here. Speed. No, oh, that's a weird impression. Anyway, we are here for the watercolor. Um. Low. Let's do the same red. Okay, so this is like solid red. Even if I press very thin, do we have different watercolors? Aquare aquarelle, watercolor, soft watercolor. Ooh, ooh. Ah, okay, that could work. And uh, now, um, yellow. Oh, I think this has by far the best mixing that I've seen. Look at how that mixes. That is so cool. I mean, it's a bit unpredictable, I guess, but the result is Kind of cool. Let's do a color from a different spectrum. And then I guess if you want it to be darker, you can change the colors. I think this is by far my favorite tool. Ah, they also get a bit dirty, but I guess that makes sense. There's a thing you realistically have to watch out for with, with watercolor. So let's compare. This is Adobe Fresco. This is ArtRage. And this is Studio Paint. I think I am... Um... I think I'm definitely ruling out art rage. I do like the edge somehow, but the colors get far too dirty too early. I mean, maybe I just have to learn how to really work it, but I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit muddy. So let's get rid of art rage. I do like this. This has like a very standard painterly digital paint look. Nothing wrong with that. Um, definitely usable. But this is, this is something else. This is, hmm. Yeah, I think we're gonna, we're gonna go with that. So I have to export my animation again. My, not animation, the illustration. Open it in Fresco. I think Fresco can open PSDs. I have that correctly in mind. Or even saves as P P PSDs, I think. Yeah, 
So let's bring that in order. Ah, oh, that one kitty we did on the wrong layer. So new vector layer. Back to our brush. And let's do it over again. Actually, now that we know that it's only going up till there, we can already stop the line there. You know, redrawing something is a chance to push the shapes once again. Hopefully to look better than they did before. I like this relaxed kitty here at the bottom. Okay. Now, does the brush to erase, and I drew those on one layer, what is wrong with me today? <laughs> oh my. Okay, so this is Ice Kitty 1, and 2 and 3 are on one layer. I am really not on top of my game today. Now, I wonder if we select Ice Kitty 1, which is this one, if we can cut into these lines of the waffle. Um, if we go to the waffle layer and choose that eraser, if it can see other... Oh, it can! It can see the lines from other layers. How wonderful. I don't think a lot of softwares that I've used before can do that. Some artifacts left, but we've got that taken care of. And there we have our cleanup. Hmm. Now, who asked me earlier about effect animation? Mr. Creative. Are you still here? Because if you are, we could talk about the effect animation. But we can also do that next stream. So I want to wrap it up soon because I'm getting hungry. That's always the problem with drawing food. Okay, so what, what can we export this as export as a single layer? 
ESB, Photoshop Big Document, I've never heard of that. Is that an extra format for especially big? Uh, especially big documents, that's really interesting. Let's try the PSD export and see how that works. Um, preview rendering as a result. Scaling is 100%. Is it transparent? Is it gonna be transparent? Hmm. We'll see. And let's throw that into Fresco. I can't. Can I? Does it have like an import? Import. It does. Now what flavors should the ice cream balls have, huh? you think okay this is all on one layer I set it to multiply Ooh. hmm Yeah, this is not transparent. How can this be? Okay, so back to Clip Studio Paint. Export uh, PNG, can I make you transparent? Oh, it's not even asking for anything. Oh, now it is. Advanced settings of colors. Draw with Capacity, tone effect, layer, hmm, hmm, hmm. Just please be transparent. Doesn't look like it. No, it's not transparent. Um, oh, our document is not transparent. <laughs> that might be the problem. Oh no, okay. Uh, okay, export, let's try it again as a PSD. There we go. And open it. Oh yeah, now it looks transparent. How, how good, what a joyful day. Import it in fresco. This is actually going to be a problem if I do animation with it, then we still have to solve that watercolor problem all over again. Nice. Okay. Now, what do we have? We have chocolate, maybe a berry flavor. Let's have a like raspberry. Raspberry is going a little bit into purple. Oh, no, you're blending with that layer. I don't want that. How do I do a layer under you? Can't drag and drop them? What? Uh. Why can't I move layers? Fresco, don't be difficult. 
All right, then we do it like that. Okay, that was difficult. But yeah, now it's separate. Okay, good. to give it some texture not pressing too hard on it and um, now if we make it brighter I think I want to notch it to a cooler color wanna notch it even more into the pink purples that's not quite bright enough Don't want it to get too shiny, though. And then maybe also have a darker color, and this time we notch the color into the reds. Which gives us a almost brown. What have we right on top of it? Maybe chocolate. Chocolate is the grumpy one. Let's pick a nice base chocolate color. Still might have to put something under it. And we do the same color shifting again to make it darker. It's getting a bit muddy. And a brighter one. the bigger brush What is the happy one on top? Is that vanilla or is it lime or something like that or lemon? I think lemon could be nice and fresh. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, mixing in white or almost white works quite well. I wonder if that works in the others too. We almost lost the watercolor um, aesthetic a little bit. I think it's starting to look too digital. I like giving chocolate a cheek. Yeah, I think this is starting to look better. I must say, I really do like the watercolor in fresco. Pretty cool. I mean, I'm not sure you can see that in the stream, but look at this texture. I mean, this uh, showing a little bit of the checkerboard pattern is now showing through. But yeah, I think I think I like that. And the brush is nothing that couldn't be at least approximate it in an animation software. Like maybe I'm gonna use uh, Clip Studio for the outlines, Fresco for the color, and then uh, for the animation we could stay in Clip Studio. Or actually I did like, we did uh, also in a live stream, we did a test earlier in one of the earlier live streams um, where we used watercolor in uh, watercolor brushes and open tunes and they were also not too bad Animators Inspire says, it's really nice, thank you. Oh, wrong layer, let's clean up the lemon. Okay, unfortunately, I have to go soon. I wanted to cook something for lunch. I don't even know what I should make yet. Maybe something with rice. We didn't have rice in a while. Maybe a curry with pineapple. Something like that. I'll have to see what we have in the kitchen. 
And then some ice cream. <laughs> I think I deserved it. Because we came up with the cutest kitty ice creams. Oops. All right. Okay, so I think the, we're going to leave it with that today. And... Um, yeah, I'm sure this is not the last time that we'll be working on some cute kittens because I'm I, I want to do something with those cute characters. Um, yeah, thank you so much everyone for hanging out with me in the chat. <laughs> Don't eat your cat. No, I, <laughs> I will not. She will not let that happen. <laughs> I think she will very Thoroughly defend herself. <laughs> Actually, I have to cook for her too. I wanted to cook chicken for her. She has it so good. We spoil our kitten. We cook fresh meat for her. And she likes that a lot more than the industrial food. But yeah. <laughs> so, lots of cooking to do. Um, yeah, animators inspire. Animate them. That would be nice. I really... Maybe even if it's just like short little loops or something like that, I think that could be really cute or start. Yeah, we'll see about that. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone so very much for hanging out with me today. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I always love talking with you in the chat. And um, yeah, I hope to see you around for another video. Um, once again, the note that we have group mentoring on Patreon, so if you want my feedback on anything, you can join us on Patreon and join the monthly group mentoring call where you can present whatever you're working on and I will give feedback. And sometimes we will also have guest mentors. Um, that's a cool thing about Patreon, you know, I can also pay other mentors to occasionally come in. So yeah, group mentoring on Patreon if you want feedback for anything art and animation related. Um, animators and Spice says enjoy cooking, thank you very much. Um, and you everybody, have a nice day. Also get yourself something nice to eat, it's very important. Uh, you know, food for mind and soul and uh, all that stuff. Um, yeah, thank you all so very much. Hope to see you again in another live stream. Take care of yourself and keep on animating. Bye bye.